What are my thoughts about Neuralink? If a chip is installed inside of a human body, can it potentially rectify biological disorders? Wouldn't it be a threat to natural human instinct? Will the chip really enhance our intelligence or make us mere robots who function as per orders? So that's a great question. I got a couple of other questions about this. Other, the other question is, will Neuralink cause adverse effects? And one more, whom will Neuralink benefit the most? So let's start with that question. Whom will Neuralink benefit the, benefit the most? It will benefit those who own it. It is owned by Elon Musk, isn't it? And a consortium of other people, mainly Elon Musk. So these technologies are created by private companies and they are not created for the benefit of humanity. They are created for the purpose of enriching the company, enriching the owner and of increasing and expanding their power. That's all there is to this. Entrepreneurship is about getting rich. It's about acquiring capital and acquiring power and acquiring leverage. And they do this by creating new technologies that are very useful to people that are very enticing, that give you a lot of benefits, but and they try to hook you to these technologies by giving you all these free benefits or paid benefits in, in case they are so they are so beneficial. But eventually it's going to end up benefiting the company. Mostly it's usually it's like this. That's how it happens. That's the thing about big data. It's about that's how it works with Facebook and Google and Twitter and all that. And I think with Neuralink, again, it will benefit Elon Musk the most. It will definitely enrich him to a great deal. It will increase his power and leverage. And the question is also about, are, will there be any adverse effects of Neuralink? So let's, let's go into what Neuralink is. Neuralink is a chip that is installed surgically inside one's skull and it interfaces with the brain. It is a brain machine interface. So the, the core concept is something like this. When we are trying to communicate non-verbal information, non-verbal data, then our bandwidth is very limited. So let's say I'm making a, a voice call or a video call, then I can convey a great deal of information just by speaking. But when I'm trying to communicate non-verbal non-visual information the bandwidth is very limited because the only thing i have is my fingers to type on the on the on the uh, type pad of a computer or on the touchpad of a uh, of a smartphone or a tablet so that is a very slow process it takes a great deal of time to type and to convey uh, information especially complex information right so what if there was an interface between the brain and the computer that would directly allow you to transmit great deals of great amounts of data in a very short period of time. So it, it entirely takes away the concept of typing manually and doing all that. So it will speed up a great deal of processes and all that. So that is the core concept and the purpose of Neuralink to give a working, to create a working brain machine interface. So you'll be able to, uh, to upload data to transmit data mentally to a computer system. You'll also be able to download data from a computer system directly into the brain. So that's what it is all about. So it's a chip that you install inside your skull. There's an outside piece and inside piece. And then there is uh, there are these, these uh, electrodes and the sensors that actually penetrate your brain tissue. They go inside the brain. So they puncture your brain tissue and they, they go inside. And that's how it interfaces with the brain. So are there any adverse effects of this? So this is something we don't understand at all. It's a very, very new technology. It's never been tried before. We don't know what happens when you inject raw data into the brain. The brain has evolved over millions, actually billions of years from the very early stages. It is designed to function in a certain way, right? And we don't understand how the brain works at all. We only have a very, very crude idea of the functioning of the brain. Now, if one were to inject raw data into the brain, that, what, what effects would it have? 
are we sure if it's going to reach the right portions of the brain? Are we going to start seeing uh, dreams with our eyes with our eyes closed? Can we see movies with, with our eyes closed because of Neuralink? Eventually, that's the kind of thing they want to achieve. But will it have adverse effects? This injection of raw data into the brain will it cause insanity? Because the brain can only uh, the brain can only handle a certain bit rate per second. And I believe there have been uh, certain calculations of this of this bit rate that the brain can process cognitively per second. If you inject more bits, more data, then will it have? Will it overload the brain? Will it impede the brain's functioning? Will it cause the person to, well, go into a certain state that is not good for them? We don't know as of now. So there are many unanswered questions. Right now, the testing is being done on non-human brains. So they had shown in, uh, in Neuralink, they had shown that uh, there were pigs that were implanted with these electrodes, these, with these devices, and you could see in real time what sort of brain activity was going on. So it's in the very infancy. Eventually, they are going to perfect the technology or at least improve upon it. And I believe they will soon, soon start testing on human subjects. So if it is done well, it may in, uh, improve the human condition and give us um, mental superpowers. Possibly, we may be we, we may be able to dream or watch movies with our eyes closed. Uh, we may have designer dreams of uh, or escape into virtual vacations with our eyes closed. This may be all paid services. Possibly, that's eventually the kind of thing that may happen if this technology matures and if it does not harm the human brain. On the other hand, it's possible that it will render people into zombies or, or digital slaves. So there are all kinds of possibilities. First of all, this is a very new technology. Injecting data into the brain is an un unproven thing. We don't know the consequences. Secondly, if the technology works, it can be used for good or for a great deal of bad as well, like every technology. Uh, will it enhance our intelligence or make us mere robots? It may enhance our intelligence. We may be able to access the internet just by closing our, our eyes or, or mentally thinking about it. So we may never have to memorize things again. But but does that make us intelligent or dumb? <laughs> That's the question, isn't it? If we don't ever have to memorize anything again, does it make us more intelligent or more stupid? These are questions that we haven't ever addressed before. So that's the that's the threshold that we are crossing right now because of these new technologies. So the future is is unknown. We are going into the, into the future with our eyes open right now. And let's see how it goes. So all these technologies are being developed by American corporations. If these technologies, technologies mature and become widespread, it's going to great, give them a great deal of power over the people of the world. And China is the competitor. They are also doing various experiments. They also, I believe, are doing some brain computer inter interface uh, tests. So we will soon find out about all this. So, so the 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 future is uncertain. We don't know whether Neuralink is going to be beneficial or harmful, but we will soon find out when it is unveiled and it is implemented on human subjects.